Drive Time. Welcome back. Uh, this week we have a treat. We have uh, a, a close friend of mine, a longtime friend of mine, John Lai. Uh, John and I, uh, we've, we've uh, got some dust on the tires together, I guess you could say. Uh, we spent a lot of time around each other, and uh, the, the cool thing about that is uh, we've been an ear, we've each played the part of the ear uh, and the advisor for the other in different seasons of our lives. And some of those seasons have not been fun to go through. Um, and that's really why John's here with us today. He's going to talk about, uh, actually, it was spun out of a conversation between us, uh, just about, you know, some of the things we've been through and, and how it shaped not only who we are, but it, it shaped our faith a little bit. Um, so John's going to talk about, you know, how we learned from our, our previous seasons and uh, just really what the benefit of that is. So John, welcome to Drive Time. Thanks for being here. Thanks, man. Thanks a bunch, David, man. I appreciate you having me. Um, and you are 110% accurate, man. We do have some dust on the tires and, and a little more in our hair than, than I'd like to, to admit that we do. But um, yeah, really, really uh, glad to be given the opportunity to talk to you today. Um, even if it is talking a little bit about uh, some of the not so fun seasons that we've been through. I know that we've certainly had um, a lot to to um, thank God for from the mountaintops that we've um, celebrated together. Um, a lot of times you and I have walked through some storms where we've had the opportunity to pray for each other. And, and, and uh, I think those are the things that we um, tend to learn the most from, as you pointed out earlier. And, um, you know, what, what I think that, that you, in the conversation that we had recently, David, um, you know, it was just so evident that, that you and I have decided that while we know that storms are inevitable, we know that we're going to walk through them, that we can either be survivors or we can be students of the storm. And uh, we've made that conscious effort to be students the best that we can of these storms. So thanks for having me again. Oh no, the the the, the pleasure's ours. Um, so if uh, if if I can kind of start you in a spot, um, and and I'm going to do this because I kind of know um, your history and 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 what you used to be all about. I know what you're about now, but um, at the same time, you were you were a um, a driven professional. Um, and you were on a very specific career path um, until, and, and you know, that's one of those great, you know, uh, life-changing moments until dot, dot, dot. Uh, yeah. so, so let's start there. You know, you're, you're, you're a career-oriented guy until. Yeah, you know, um, for 35 years, I stayed in one industry and did all that I could to climb that ladder as quickly as I could. And, and in all honesty, um, you know, I go back to my BC self, my before Christ self. And I think that that's important that we do that. Um, someone once said that, that, you know, there's a metallic taste that you have that you dislike about that. And so I do go back to that, that time often when I'm reflecting. And I remember um, while climbing that ladder, that corporate ladder that you and I talked about so often, um, there are a lot of things that I put to the wayside and prioritized the wrong things. Um, my family suffered. My relationship with, with God was non-existent at that time. Um, and, and being a reflection of anything but John's creation um, was, was basically how I, I saw myself, where I, it, the steps that I were taking was, were, were orchestrated by me. And um, and that was a uh, that was a career, David, that was incredibly time consuming. It was hospitality, and so it was seven days a week, um, 365 days a year, and got to a point where I thought that that my identity was in what I did, not who I served, not who I was. Um, I, I thought who I was was exactly my profession, and and treated people around me as such and treated my, my profession as my God. And, and um, about five years ago, I, I've been 
a, a Christian now for a little over 11 years, and, and it's only by the grace of God that, that I'm sitting here today, um, and I'm not dead or in jail. And, and so, um, you know, about five years ago, I thought I was doing everything right, man. You know, serving God faithfully, loving my family the best as I could, um, but still holding on very tightly to an idol that I know, I knew then, and I know now, um, was not what God had for me. And and I wasn't willing to let that go. I wasn't willing to hold it loosely. Um, so God did what God so often does, and and He removed it from me to get my attention and and um and reprioritize my life and and i sitting here today um couldn't give him more praise and thanks for that walking through that season um you know there were a couple times when i wanted to shake my fist at him and, and go man you know don't you know how hard i worked for that i earned that um only to realize that that no you know that was that was given to me to steward and, and just like everything else, um, it, you know, learned to hold it loosely. But it was a time in my life, David, where, you know, I had to, as we look back on now, become a student of that storm and really lean into what God had for me then, um, only to realize what he was preparing me for that I'm living in now. And, and if it wasn't for guys like yourself um, and some pastors that were, in our lives at the time, um, you know, I don't recognize that. I don't see that of my own being. And um, and, and some of the things that, that, that I was taught in that season um, have certainly helped shape who I am today and, and help shape um, how, I, how I mentor young professionals and, and, and high schoolers today, how I raise my kids today. How I love my wife today, and 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 you know some of the things I thank God for today. Um, so yeah, want to know some of those things? So um, all right. So now you you talked about it like five years ago. Um, just to put in a, into context a little bit, um, that the way that you know God gets our attention so many times, like you said, is the removal of that thing that that we're focused on that we're pursuing. And, and, you know, you know, very well that that's my story as well. Uh, the thing I was chasing after was snatched right out of my hands and, uh, I couldn't be more thankful for it. Um, so just, I mean, you don't have to go into a lot of detail, but just how did, how did that, that, um, removal leave you in, in, you know, what was that storm like? What, uh, what did you have to do in order to become the, the student uh, in the storm um, before you could uh, move forward into the next season that God had for you? Yeah, there was a, a pastor in my life that was walking me through um, that season, thankfully. And, and one of the, the, the things that he reminded me of um, was a story out of Matthew uh, 14. I, I think it's it's right after he feeds the 5,000 and Jesus is exhausted, right? He's just learned about John the Baptist. He's just performed all these miracles and he's gone. Um, he goes up to a mountaintop and he sends the disciples into a boat, into a storm overnight. And and one of the things that stuck with me, and, and, and this comes back to your, your question, I promise. Um, one of the things that, that, that really gets me on this one is that you have to imagine Jesus goes up to a mountaintop to pray, sends his disciples out into the ocean where he knows a storm is coming. And while the disciples are panicked in the middle of the storm um, for what seems like all night, um, Jesus is on the mountaintop looking down at them. So the lesson that he wanted to teach me in that was that even though they didn't see Jesus and they couldn't feel Jesus, his eyes were on them the entire time that they were in the storm. So really keeping that in perspective, because what, what it boiled down to was everything that I thought that I controlled um, was taken from me. So um, the, the resorts that I managed were all sold and the new owners came in and decided they, they wanted to bring in their own person. Well, that happened. I can't control that. 
Um, so, you know, 35 years of working with uh, in an industry and, and, and spending 15 of those with one company to get to where I thought um, was my pinnacle, um, what, what I thought was God's best for me, um, God re made me realize that A, I couldn't control it, but B, that he was still with me. And, and what Jesus did in that, in that story was he sent them out because there was something better waiting for them on the other side. But he had to put them through a storm to get there. And, and so just the other, the thing about that story is, is that the disciples, um, you know, as, as Jesus starts walking towards them to remind them, hey, I'm here with you, um, they look out and, they, you know, they, 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 first of all, don't even believe it's Jesus, right? They think it's a ghost. Um, and I think that, that for me, it was just one of those things that, that I've got to have that faith to know that, that what's on the other side is, is, is going to be better. Um, and then the second thing that I had to keep reminding myself, David, was, was to not wallow in my self-pity. Um, and and to say that better was not to tell my story too soon and 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 that meant to my family um i, I needed my family to see that, that that i was strong that i was keeping the faith now did they know that i was um i was sad and that i needed i needed prayer to to, to get me through the, the days that were um they did um but did they also need to see that my faith wasn't waning uh, yeah they absolutely did Watching a drive time, the, the I think he just did with Pastor Corey. One of the things he talked about at the beginning was the um, the statistics of of when men engage and and when men um, show um, strong faith within the family and, and and the percentages are exponential, right? When when we lead from that that perspective, so realizing that 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 part of that storm. Um, what he was teaching me in that storm was how to be patient and trust his timing. Um, you know, once again, just because they didn't see Jesus doesn't mean that he wasn't with them. And 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 then reminding myself that God's timing wasn't designed to give me relief. Um, it was really designed to give me revelation, but I couldn't really see it at that point. I knew that on the other side that I would. Um, and And it was... So to go back to your question, the only way that I get through that season is by surrounding myself with people that would lift me up when I needed it. That would, that meant texting you at weird times of the night. It meant asking for prayer. And it meant you getting in my face every now and then and telling me to open the book and, and and remember God's promises for me, and 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 without that, it becomes very easy um, for me to go back to shaking my fist. So, I mean, I I I can remember it clearly, um, and uh, what I I don't want to you know kind of wallow down in the in the details of it, but I I do want to. I want to draw attention to a couple things you said, um, because you, you talked about having a pastor that was, was walking with you through that season first. Um, and that was a first, one of the first things you said, as you talked about it. Um, then you had mentioned, you know, not telling your story too soon, which I think a lot of guys can take as, well, I'll just shoulder this myself. And I'll just internalize it and I'm not going to share. But again, you, before you said that, you pointed out you're walking with a pastor. Um, and then you closed out with talking about, and I know it wasn't just me. There, there was a, a band of brothers around you that were praying for you, uh, that were, were walking with you and um, to some degree enduring the storm with you. Um, so what I, what I want to make sure that the guys who are listening here, uh, what, what I want to make sure that they hear from you is not, not just the part where you say, don't tell your story too soon, um, but also the parts where 
you're walking with a pastor, um, seeking wise counsel, but then surrounding yourself with brothers um, on that boat in that storm uh, that aren't trying to fix you, aren't trying to change your reality. They're just there to point you to truth. Yeah. And, and I think that, and that, that's so good, David, because, you know, there are um, different people that God places in my life for specific purposes. Right. And, and, and you're one of those guys, man, that um, through it all, I've known that I could call you at two in the afternoon or two in the morning and, and you'd drop what you're doing and, and either pray for me or come, come meet me. What I, when I say don't tell your story too soon, I think that there are also people got places in our lives for us to share testimonies with. And a lot of times, man, I've, uh, you know, I see, I see it happen where God places someone in your life for you to encourage and you end up telling a story of how miserable you might be right now. And I think that, that, that that's easy for guys to do, right? We, we're going to go out and, and have a sandwich for lunch. And you go, how are you doing? And and if I'm talking to you, I'm gonna give you the down and dirty. Here's how I'm doing, man. Here's where I'm I'm winning. Here's where I'm losing. I need your prayer here. Um, if I'm with with a group of my coworkers who I know, man, I they may or may not um, have a relationship with Christ. Man, there's an opportunity for me to share a story with them that will let them see what God's doing in my life without uh, sharing with them the frustration that I'm walking through right now because God's not done telling this particular story and I know it. I don't know if that, that makes sense at all. No, it, it, it absolutely makes sense. Uh, you know, when, when you tell, when you share that testimony, when you, when you tell that story, um, especially if it's a painful story, um, it really helps if you have the resolution in the end. Um, you know, I, I, I can joyfully tell stories of some of the most painful times of my life because I know how it ended. I know how uh, God changed me in that. And I know you do the same with, with your story as well. Um, but, you know, to your point, it's if you don't have that resolution, if God hasn't revealed uh, the purpose of that season yet, um, yeah, that's that's one for your your closest relationships and for your mentors and um and and for that wise counsel you're surrounding yourself with and and it's probably not so much for social media. Absolutely, nailed it. As always. So, all right. Well, let me let me ask you this. Um, and and you've watched a few of our drive times. I know that. Um, I like to to land on on that question of what's our tangible step this week? What's our takeaway? What is the thing that we can do that's going to help us improve? Um, if only by 1%, it just a little bit better this week, um, as a man, as a Christian, uh, just as a, a, a person and as a, as a, a created being, what, what's that, that takeaway we have for this week? And I'll tell you, it, the things, if you're going to be a student of the storm, you've got to learn a couple different things. And, and I think that, that you have to learn what to focus on, obviously, right? That that's, goes without saying, but I think you also have to be willing to learn what to ignore. And, and, and so going back to that story of, of Jesus walking on water, when, when he calls Peter out of the boat, um, he's walking, he, he calls one of his disciples and, and, and they're actually walking on the water to him. I mean, I don't know about you, but that, that, that would be top two stories of my entire life. And while his eyes are on Jesus, he's doing a great job of it. The second he gets distracted by the wind and the waves, he sinks, right? But we see a, redeem a redeeming part of that story and that he reaches out for Jesus. He knows that Jesus is close and he reaches out. And, and, and Jesus grabs him and pulls him back up. Um, while he was focused on Jesus, man, he was doing it. He was getting there. Um, the second he, he turned his focus to the things that he ignored in those first few steps, he slipped a little bit. And the second he, he focused on Jesus again, 
Jesus picked him back up. And I think that, that that's the thing for me that I've got to remind myself is, is as I'm making notes, man, here are the things that I need to focus on. I also need to be so acutely aware of the distractions um, that are going to surround that goal that, that I ultimately want to get to. Um, you know, it, it, looking at, at, at a storm as um, a season in your life that that's going to be miserable um, is just the wrong way to approach it. You know, it, it, we're going to walk through them. And I, you know, for me, I've learned a few things through the storms, man. I, um, Jesus changed my heart in a big way by w- walking me through a lot of those storms. He, he, um, he gave me a, a, an ability to love people more through those, right? And, and have a compassion for people um, that walk through things like that. He, he, he helped me find out my closest friends through those storms. I mean, honestly, I mean, there, there were guys that, like I said, man, I could text at 2 a.m. And, and at 4 a.m. I'd have a response back. And that was if you weren't working. <laughs> if you were working, <laughs> by 2.04, I'd have a response back. Um, but, you know, I, I really found my people in those storms. Um, I found that I ended up experiencing God and his graciousness um, like I had never had before. I mean, I'd been on the mountaintops, and yeah, I could say, yeah, God's good. But um, walking through those storms, I mean, you, you just feel him in a way that, that you hadn't ever um, in the past. And um, and then the last thing is that he just gave me a story that was worth telling. He, he gave me a story that, that, that because we don't run away from it, we, we can go through it and then tell that story to help a brother um, who might be going through the same thing um, in the future. But, um, you know, more than anything, he gives us the courage to say yes to whatever the next assignment is, right? If we can get through this one, well, gosh, you were with me then. You won't leave me now, right? But I think that, yeah, just focusing on the things that, that you know are important, but also focusing on the things that you know can distract you and realizing that, that the second you get caught up in those, you lose sight of what's really important. That's good. Uh, John, thanks for, uh, thanks for being with us today. And, and thanks for sharing uh, really from your heart, uh, your, your desire to see guys engage and, and trust God. The storms are going to come. And just that decision, like you said, you, you can either suffer the storm or be a student of the storm. And uh, it's, a, it's a great perspective for us. So thank you again for being with us, uh, gentlemen. We'll see you again back next week, um, Monday morning, every Monday morning, new time or a new topic, a new speaker, and just a, a, a new perspective on uh, who God's calling us to be. Have a great week, guys.